Today on The Grid, it's How Would I Edit Your Photos Day. The real Rocket Man Kuna is back from his adventures in New Mexico, and he's got some awesome images. We've got an update on the Platyball Kickstarter project. Plus, we've got some nice giveaways for you folks watching us live. And this love fest of love all starts in just 60 seconds. The Grid is brought to you by Profoto, the light shaping company. Check out the Profoto B1X, power in all the right places. Go to profoto.com slash US. And Platypod, the tripod alternative that is changing the world. Everybody has a Platypod. You should too. Go to platypod.com. Hey folks, it's a great day. Welcome everybody. Uh, Scott Kelby here. We're live on The Grid. Joining me, as always, and back from his excruciating adventure <laughs> to know his fun, fun times out fun in New Mexico, times. Mr. Eric Kuna, the Rocket Man. Hey, Scott. Well, good to be back. You, you guys that are watching at home can't tell, but uh, Eric is, is wearing Hawaiian shorts today. <laughs> oh, yeah. It is hot here in Florida. Yeah. We are, we are it, not in winter. We're not in fall, have that's a for Hawaiian sure. pattern. Yep. But anyway, yep. it's a nice look. You guys yeah. are just getting the salmon shirt, but really, it's too bad we don't have a wide angle to give yeah. you the full shorts. Really and get in it's, there. It's it's a nice look. Yeah. Anyway, glad <laughs> glad to have you here, Mr. Kuno. Welcome back. We missed you last week, uh, but you got some really great shots. Uh, can you just share a couple real quick? So yeah, you yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm I've, I haven't I haven't got done with them. I, you know, I've got to still stack. I did a lot of Milky Way shooting. Got to stack them, but I did. Um, uh, light painting, uh, low level light painting and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, oh yeah, I gotta, you know, they're gonna tell me here in a second to connect in my computer because I didn't do that, but maybe they can see it now. So uh, let's see, maybe. 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 Oh, there you go. There you go. So yeah, so there's uh, there's one of the shots. We're out in the uh, New Mexico Badlands uh, shooting in there, uh, doing some low-level light painting. Um, let's see him bigger. All right, let's go bigger. Go bigger, go home. So uh, there's one, and then uh, did another one there. Ooh, I like that one. Yeah, so. And then another one and these are single exposures so right now these are single exposures i have to stack them and kind of clean stuff up but these are just single exposures right now so how did so. you light the foreground so the foreground actually so it's lit by just one of those Lytra pro lights i've got the diffuser on the Lytra pro i've got it down at like the lowest possible setting and about a hundred feet 200 feet away so it's just casting just enough light on the foreground where over that 20 second exposure, Ooh, you're like kind of getting one. that. So this one, I actually have one light over here and then you can see there's the mountain behind it. I put a light on the other side lighting that. <laughs> so you got, you know, kind of like multiple lights uh, and stuff like that. So, and actually this is in Florida. So this was actually taken right when I got back in Florida uh, because we had this, this um, scene where uh, this is actually the crescent moon so that's just a little bit of a moon just about seven percent of a moon but it starts looking like the sun and then that's the sunset behind it and the milky way all in one exposure that's pretty cool because it's generally you don't want the moon in because the moon pollutes the, the sky. moon pollutes it but if it's just enough it creates kind of that cool effect wow so, nice nice shooting yeah text. yeah thanks all righty. Yeah, and I can show more once we get done. So Okay, so a couple other little bits of news. Uh, first is I ordered my iPhone, my iPhone 12. There you go. I'm excited about that. It's got better yeah, stuff. I can't wait. <laughs> better camera. I use my iPhone camera a lot, a ton. I think I have 16,000 photos on my phone. Oh, yeah. And they just keep getting better and better. It's I'm excited my about primary that. primary camera uh, anymore. Today our topic is how I would edit your photo. And we've asked viewers to send in unedited, raw, or JPEG straight out of the camera. I'm going to take you through the whole process, how I would edit it in Lightroom. And if necessary, uh, jump over to Photoshop. Okay, in other news. So we got an update this week. You guys may have heard of it. Uh, the plot of ball. So the plot of ball that we were expecting in December, unfortunately, is going to be delayed. And so most people have been really cool with it. You know, uh, most people have been like, hey, it's not an issue. It's no problem. We understand. You know, it's a Kickstarter project. Uh, I know Eric's been waiting for two years on a Kickstarter project. Yeah, I actually was just talking about that. I, there was a, a, a Kickstarter from a couple years ago. 
and uh, it kept on getting delayed and delayed, and finally it showed up. Um, right. Well, this is like not that kind of case, ago. luckily. But everybody was like, most most everybody was really cool about it, and they understood. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're in the middle of a pandemic. It's just a weird, weird time, and everything is delayed. But a few people were complete, complete, awful, awful jerks about it. I mean, they were they were horrendous. Anyway, when I heard about this, I heard about this all yesterday. And so I asked uh, Dr. T, you guys know Larry from his, uh, his uh, appearances here on the grid. Uh, and he is a, a pediatrician by day up in New York State. And so uh, we asked Larry if he could just give us five minutes just to kind of tell us about, about uh, what's going on, why we have the delay and stuff. So, Larry, are you there? I'm here. Full, full disclosure, it's New Jersey. Oh, I'm sorry. It's New Jersey. I'm oh, sorry. You're right. Jersey. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. How are you doing? It's really nice to be back here. And I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm just so thankful to all our friends from the Kelby One organization and from all of your followers who have just been amazing to us. We really appreciate it. Well, thanks, Larry. And so, you know, of course, uh, we're all disappointed that it's not going to be out in December uh, because I, I've actually used it. <laughs> and I know. And I was talking to Larry yesterday when I asked him to come on the show, and he was telling me, he goes, you know how much you like the one that you had? We've developed one that the mechanism is even tighter. I mean, as far as, like, no creep whatsoever. It's smoother. It works better. And he was telling me, he's all excited about it. No one is more excited about the platter ball than you are and i know that you've got to be disappointed so what happened what, what's causing the delay so so scott this is one case where i'm more demanding than you are you were really happy this is this is the one that you had tried okay and tested out and you were delighted with it i wasn't as delighted because you know what yes it's got great grip it feels wonderful it looks absolutely gorgeous but i wasn't happy that you had, to, you had to push really hard on the controls to get it to tighten up. And it felt, you see, when you shifted from lock to unlock, a little bit of a click, wasn't happy with that. I wanted even more hold on this. I wanted the, uh, the panning head to work even smoother. So through the engineers, I was reassured right when, when we were running the Kickstarter that it would be maybe another few weeks just to tweak it and we'd have everything right. As it turns out, we ended up going for a new design on the gearbox that ended up t not taking a few weeks, but ended up taking about four or five months. <gasps> then we ran into the pandemic. And the big issue with the pandemic was we're using one of the finest factories in the world to produce this. This is a, a high-tech engineering piece. And it really needed very exacting tolerances so we use this factory in Taiwan, and a lot of business was leaving China and moving to Taiwan, so they have quite an overload of work over there, too. Bottom line, we are delayed, and we're delayed significantly. It's approximately um, six or seven months of further delays. What we're looking at is that our early backers, and as you remember, we started, uh, we started the Kickstarter right on the grid, and we had so many of your supporters um, helping us and backing us. The early backers, instead of receiving this by the end of December, will receive it. I'm, I really think, not just think, but this is the projections that we're getting from a very reliable factory. We should receive this by the beginning of August, maybe a little earlier. I'm going to keep pushing, but I wanted top quality. Now, every just to give everybody an idea, this is the most recent prototype. It doesn't have all the design on it because we wanted to get this out quickly. The controls on this are silky smooth. It doesn't take a whole lot of pressure to get to an incredible amount of pressure. We had rated it for 22 pounds. I tested this to 33 pounds. That means we hung 33 pounds off of this sideways and it wouldn't move. If you've got a camera that's 33 pounds, there may be another issue. Yeah, for real. <laughs> but, you know Waiting on a platter ball may not be your biggest your camera, concern. Pushes it a little bit off. This is so rock solid. The, the locking brake for the, uh, for the panning head now is just so easy to turn. This feels like a $500 ball head. And I feel like we're going to be delivering the very, very best that Platypod and Platyball has to offer. 
yes, people are disappointed. And I understand I'm disappointed, too. Believe me, when I sat in at a meeting last week with the manufacturers, you should have seen, you know, the color drain from my face. But I know with confidence we're going to have the very finest product. Interestingly, the electronic leveling device on here, this is done. It is being manufactured. We're going to have about 6,000 of these made up, and they're going to be ready in another week or two. But the mechanical part takes time. The tooling takes several months, about three months to do, and it has to be extremely exact. Our tolerances on some of the parts are, we're talking within a thousandth of an inch accuracy. You can't, you, you can't overrush that. It has to be done right. All right. Well, that's, it's disappointing for sure, but uh, I know that it'll be worth the wait. And I know that with the, your last Kickstarter project, the, the, uh, the Ultra, the, the Platypod Ultra, uh, that thing came out just uh, better than anybody had hoped. It, I mean, it's obviously it's been a sensation. It's, I think what's helped propel the Platyball is how great the, uh, the, the, the uh, Platypod Ultra is. And Scott, you know we've always delivered on our project early, not even just as promised, but early. And that was my intent here and my expectation when I sat with you on the grid, my full expectation. Uh, you know, I just could not pass up quality for speed here. My apologies to uh, anyone who is disappointed. But honestly, when you get this, you're going to be getting something absolutely amazing. All right. Well, Larry, thank you for taking the time to drop in with us today. I appreciate it. I know you're very busy. <laughs> but got to uh, get back to patients. I know, I know. But I, I appreciate you taking a time now. You probably have a, a lobby full of patients. Go take care of them. And, and thanks again for taking the time to, 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 uh, to address us. We'll talk to you next time, buddy. My pleasure. Have a great day. Thanks a lot. You too. Larry is such a good guy. I know him and his family, and they're just really top quality people. And when I talked to him yesterday, Eric, his, his heart just sunk. Yeah. I mean, he's, you know, Larry, he's, yeah. he, he, would, he would want it out. But I also know this about Larry. He's really more particular than me and you. Oh, yeah. He really is. Like, I'm like, no, it's fine. It's fine. I, I love it. I think that it's was great. like, like, like no, the, no, we the gotta, original gotta questions. Be. Yeah. Well, I, like, I really think, I think his heart is in this to where he wants to, to deliver something that the photography industry will look at and go, this is really yep. good. He, he wants, to, he's got that quality levels that above what I or Eric need. <laughs> All right. You guys ready to look at some pictures? Yeah. All right. So I asked folks, uh, this is the third time doing this and I want to tip of the hat to Terry White. Terry White came up with this idea. He does this on his master class and he said, you should do it on the grid. So I'm yeah, not, people oh, loved I, can take, it last I can time. take this off now. I'm not stealing it from Terry. Terry said, you should do this on yeah, the grid. Yeah, so I want people to loved it last time. So let's see how it goes. Yeah, so we've, this will be the third one that we've done. Uh, we've asked people to send me. Now, some people went ahead and sent in completely fully done images. I'm like, that doesn't yeah. help. Oh. Don't send in pictures that look great that are obviously already post-processed. So send me your originals. And, and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a quick look. On a, now, I'm not going to spend 25 minutes on one photo. I'm going to go through and give you an idea of what I would do and what we can do to make it look better. Let me just grab our first image. Let's grab this one right here we go. So uh, I do want to commend the photographer on the light being pretty nice. The, night, the light is actually pretty good. Um, there are some issues that we need to, to, to fix just in, in composition and stuff that we can do yeah, as well. I mean, that's the, that's the first right. one that just jumped right. out, right? So here's the first thing that I would say if I was editing this photo. What is this photo? It's a portrait. What's a portrait about the person? How much of this photo is the person? 10%, 15%, maybe 20. It's 80% other yeah, stuff. Yeah, maybe 20 right maybe 20 so maybe 20 percent and so i understand that you want like maybe the city in the background i don't know if that's atlanta or where that is nashville anyway uh you, you want the city in the background and you want this to be an outdoor shot but there's this okay let's fix it let's yeah just, let's just fix it let's just fix so, it so first right. yeah the, the first one, dead center in the, the crop frame tool. so we we're gonna crop it right, right. now <laughs> also notice that her her we, we kind of broke a composition rule here. We, we cut center. off her wrists. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah, good. Yeah, we, can't, we can't recover from that. We can't. So we're going we're gonna to come in here, and we're going to come way down here. We're still going to, we're not going to lose the atmosphere, right? We're still, ooh, that elbow is not in a great place either. Let's go up mm -hmm. a little higher. Let's come down a little bit. 
and let's come over. Which way do we want to go? Something yeah, yeah, that maybe work. more like this, and let's get it up to size now. All right, so now it's a portrait. <laughs> so, Congratulations. So now, there we go. All right, there we go. Now it's portrait. Okay. So I think the cropping was a big thing. Now, if you're not sure where to start, this is something that actually works pretty well in Lightroom or Camera Raw. It doesn't matter. It's the same, same, this is the same program. They even look the same now. Um, so we're in Camera Raw. Go to Lightroom's Auto button and just click it. Let's just see where that gets us. Let me back it up a little bit. Click on Auto. Yeah, that actually wasn't bad. Wasn't for one bad. for a one click fix, it's yeah. not bad. All right, uh, what would I do next? Well, there's a, something that I do to every portrait, and that is I would grab the adjustment brush, increase the exposure, maybe a half a stop, and let's just paint over her face. A portrait is about the person's face. Fashion's about the clothing. Um, portraits are about the person's face, and so let's kind of might might be a tad too bright, but that doesn't look bad. So we're good there. Uh, we could, let's go back and look at the settings that it put in place for the just the auto fix. Uh, I might add a little more contrast. Uh, if you want to bring out texture, you can, you got to be careful because you don't want to bring out texture in her face. So what you might want to do is you want to bring out the texture in her blouse is to go to the adjustment brush instead. Uh, let's uh, go to texture. Let's raise it. We'll reset the exposure. Let's raise the texture amount and then let's just paint over just her blouse to bring out the detail in her necklace and the detail in her shirt and maybe even her hair. And that's about it. You don't want to touch her face. All right. What else would I do? I would probably, and there's not a lot to do here. You could change the color profile if this was a if this was a raw photo, I would change it to portrait, which would make things kind of look a little flatter for a portrait. This is a JPEG, so I can't do that. But what I would do is I would scroll down here to the effects panel, and I would lightly go to the vignetting and just darken the edges just a hair mm -hmm. on the very outside edge. I'm that at like a lot. minus 16. And I think, let's just, let's do a before and after real quick, see where we are. So... There's where we started, and that's after the crop, and then here's those changes. It's pretty subtle stuff at this point. Um, we haven't done a whole bunch. The sky in the background's kind of meh. Uh, yeah, it's subtle, but it's huge. Yeah, I mean, because it's, now it's, immediately it's, when you when you open up that photo, when you hit the before, it's flat. When you hit this photo now, yeah. I'm looking immediately at her face. Right. But I still see the background stuff. I still see she's you know the city behind her. You know, like everything's there. Now, there's one more thing that you could do. I'm going to shoot over here to Photoshop real quick, and I'm going to go to Liquify. Now, you notice that her right eye is squinting a little bit versus her left eye. You might be able to go to the right eye over here. It's automatically going to use facial aware. It already knows that that's a face. It's already So we might go into the eye, not eye width, eye height. Let's see if we can make, look at that. You can open it up. Yeah. Boom, done. That is an amazing tool. Yeah, and I think that would, would help too. I don't think we have to do anything else. The distance between the eyes is good. And that's just for a quick get us started kind of thing, that's, that's not so bad. And let's just look at the before and after on the eye. Hey, she's winking at you. <laughs> anyway, but that, that kind of balances that out. Uh, if you wanted to, there's one more thing you could do. She has what we call hot spots. So there's a couple of areas where her skin looks sweaty right and like one of them is on her nose right there why is it my hold on my my brush to, my my hand isn't there you go i'll have to do it manually you could go in and here's what i would do get the spot healing brush go right over that spot on her nose and just click once now it's completely gone but you also lose the highlight so you 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 don't want the sweatiness you, you do want to keep the highlight. So what you could do is go into the edit menu and choose fade spot healing brush. And then think of this as undo on a slider. If I drag it to zero, there's the shiny. If I drag it to 100, it's completely gone. If we drag it in the middle, we can get the highlight back without it looking sweaty. And there's a couple other places that you might do this right here in her cheek. 
uh, right there on her chin and you could do a little overall skin softening if you wanted to uh, that might not be bad but it's just very very subtle uh, i don't know if you saw this yesterday in our webcast we did a live webcast about all the new features in the latest version of photoshop and one of the things that they had was uh oh rats i'm running the old version <laughs> yeah. okay the neural filters or? yeah the neural filter I was going to show the neural filter to do skin softening. It's not the yeah. greatest skin softening. Yeah, it's just another. And it's yeah, made us I'd rather go. You know who's got a good one? Athentex Perfectly Clear Complete. Let's hit. Let's hit it with that because it'll do her eyes and the skin and everything. Uh, just go over here to Intelligent Auto, and and that'll probably do it. Or just Beautify is nice too, and just click OK. And so I'll show you before and after. Well, it brightened the image too, but look what it did for her eyes. It sharpened her eyes, it brightened her eyes, and it smoothed out the skin. It smoothed out the skin without making it too blurry. Yeah. So that's kind of, let me zoom in a little so you can see. Yeah, it's just enough. It's just enough. It does, it does actually a fairly nice job. All right, so that's one to get us started. Uh, we right, got I think if you went from the, where we started to there, at like all the way back in the beginning, that yeah. is a big jump. Yeah, I'll show you where we were. Let's duplicate the image. And then we'll go to the before. Let's just revert it. And you'll see where we well, started. Well, I think even, even you got to go back to the crop. You know, like if you look at it oh, on crop. To go, yeah, I want to go know, like, all the way to it, the... It, that's, what it, that's where just in those short... Because you, you could have done all that stuff maybe in a minute, minute and a half. Let's reset this. Yeah, it. yeah. I, I'm, I'm explaining it as I go. So there's the original. Like, yeah, if you look at that. And, and then, then here's our finished. that. It, that's a night and day. Yeah. Well, it's it's it. I think it it helps make. It. It's yeah. already a good photo. You got a good subject. She's got a nice yeah. smile, and the lighting was pretty good. The yes. photographer did a lot of things right, and just yeah, the camera, the, post, yeah, the, the, the exposure settings, is not blown out. It's not you know yeah. out of focus. Yeah, and there's more you could do. You could put a soft focus effect over the whole image. Yep. I mean, there's more things you could do, but I think that kind of gets us into a good, good usable image. All there right. So um, when we come back, we're going to look at a whole bunch more. I got a bunch of them here for you. Uh, we're going to do them about that speed. We got some shout outs to folks that are tuning in from yeah, all, all over. over the world. And we will see you guys right after this. Don't go away. Light is photography. That's why, besides the camera itself, Perhaps the most powerful tool a photographer has is a flash. When you hold it in your hand, you're holding the ability to create light on demand. When you understand light, you can create drama, mood and emotion. For many photographers, learning flash has been an uphill battle and some have simply given up. But that's all about to change. What if you could spend two full days with two of our industry's most passionate, gifted teachers who would finally demystify Flash for the beginner and push and challenge more experienced Flash users? Can you imagine just how far you would go in those two days? This fall, you'll have that opportunity as two of the top Flash authors and educators come together to create a truly unique learning experience. Joe McNally, the man who opened the photographic world to the real power of Flash and inspired an entire generation of Flash users through his books, The Moment It Clicks and The Hot Shoe Diaries, along with Scott Kelby, author of The Flash Book. The number one best-selling book on Flash for the past three years have come together to coach you, to mentor you, to teach, inform and illuminate by sharing their latest flash techniques, their hard-earned secrets and even the post-processing and retouching work that goes into making stunning, remarkable images as you uncover a whole new world of light powered by just a simple flash. It's two full days, all presented live, all online. This is the Flash Photography Conference. The power of light is in your hands. For over 20 years, leading software developer Boris FX has made its mark on the film and television industry. Now, for the first time, our Academy and Emmy award-winning visual effects tools are available for photographers. Welcome to Optics. Optics is a collection of 160 filters for Photoshop and Lightroom. Simply apply the effect and launch the interface. 
Optics features thousands of customizable and creative presets for photo editing and effects layering. The top tools include lens flares for cinematic looks, realistic night skies with star fields and moon generator, add lightning with on-screen interactive control. The Easy Mask tool creates masks with just a few clicks. Optics is available now as a plugin for Photoshop and Lightroom and includes the standalone application for Mac OS and Windows. Get Optics now for 15% off. Visit BorisFX.com, add Optics to your cart, and apply coupon code KELBY15. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by b &H Photo, the professional source since 1973. Hi, we're back. Scott Kelby here, Mr. Kuna over there. Yeah, and we got people joining all over the world. We got uh, Jerry uh, joining from Washington State. We got Marianne all the way from England uh, yeah. joining us. Uh, Patricia from Tennessee. We got Airman Michael Berg over there from North Carolina. And we got James Gordon Berg. Harrison saying hello. We got Joseph Bruno from New Jersey. Deb joining us. Susan joining us from Ohio. Glenn from Calgary. Becky from Goodyear, Arizona. Then we got Gary from Goodyear, Arizona as well. And then uh, Carl from Quebec. Uh, Mike joining us. Carmen from Germany. Jamie from Israel. Lars from Denmark. Mateo from Italy. So all over the world, we got people joining us. Everybody's in the house today. All right, there so glad go. to have you guys here. It's a great day. Uh, let's move on. Let's open up another mm -hmm. image. Let me grab one here-ish. Here we go. All righty. Not a bad photo to start with, but the first thing that jumps out at me is that it has a um, an alignment problem. Yes, it's right? like so, off center. It just, right, and, and man, it's and, so. But it's not. It's not off center, and it's off center just enough where it looks distracting. Right, it's got a distortion. Yeah. So this is this is key when you're shooting something like this. You got to really be careful to line up. Like if I'm in mm -hmm. in a in, a, in yeah. a, like this looks like a cathedral. I, I got to line up on that center line and make sure that your camera, because you can even line your camera up on the center line. Your stand is lined up, but your lens, if your lens is off just a little bit, you get what you see here. Mm -hmm. So, the, but this we can fix this. Uh, go to and this I got to fix the front. I got to fix this first. Yeah. So I'm going to go to geometry. I'm going to go to horizontal and I'm just going to slide it over. Now, look at the look at the very bottom of the screen. Look at this platform that the the altar platform. Mm -hmm. So watch it. I'm trying to straighten it out. And I might even need to rotate it just a hair to get it kind of straight. I'm using that grid line there. That's uh, something like that-ish. It's still not mm -hmm. 100%. I nope. think we're going to have to fix the last part of this because I'm looking at the roof. So look, I have the ground good, yeah, but, the but now roof's my roof's lean, messed up. Lean into, I can fix that yeah. in Photoshop. We yep. can fix that. But this is one of those things that you want to be careful to do when you're shooting it because I'm telling you guys, I, I've learned this the hard way. You're off by a little bit. Yeah. You're paying so for it later. The, the point being is the closer you can get it in camera, the better. Yes. Yeah, so makes your I mean, life easier. Spending that little extra time to get it yep, right in make camera. Make sure, is my yes. camera right centered in the middle of the aisle? Is the cam not just my platypod or whatever? Yeah. Because I the like the low angle. The lens, the angle's the, good. The middle right. of the lens. Yep. Is it centered? Let's hit constrain crop here. It'll crop off the extra stuff we're going to have to crop off later anyway. So it's off a little bit. We, I'm, I'm really confident we can fix that in Photoshop very, very easily. Uh, what else? Let's go up here and hit the uh, auto button. Okay, the auto button did, was not a big winner today. No. <laughs> now, we know that the windows are kind of blown out with the stained glass. This would have been a really great candidate for HDR. HDR, HDR yes. would have nailed it, but we can still get kind of close. Yeah, we can pull back those I'm going to pull those highlights down to a minus 100. And look at the detail that comes back yep. in the stained glass just by doing that all right now the other thing is there is like the light is creating kind of a lens flare effect you don't see the little circles but what it's doing is washing out the photo so i'm going to go to d haze oh, yeah. which remember d haze is just another form of contrast so i'm going to i would drag it up kind of cut look at it cutting through the haze yep. look at that so we're cutting through the haze uh let's see what else we need to do uh, let's see, the exposure actually could come down a hair because a cathedral is not supposed to be super bright in most cases. It would be kind of a darker interior. Uh, I'm going to do this. 
the, the star of cathedrals uh, 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 very often is this beautiful stained glass work. Mm -hmm. Let's go get the adjustment brush and let's bring back the highlights a little bit and the exposure a little bit. Get a small brush, smaller than that, and let's paint over these, right over them, to bring back some more detail. Now, I do want to tell you guys, you have to be careful with this because if you drop the, the when you're painting like this, it can turn the things that are supposed to be white, it turns them gray. It doesn't just make them yeah. light white. <laughs> so I'm going to try this. It looks, looks like it's doing pretty good. Yeah, it's doing a pretty good job. All right, let me lower the exposure a little bit more, see if I can get some more. That's about as far as yeah, I can go. Yeah, you're windows, to get on that edge. Yep, you're right on the edge of those windows looking bad. But look, we can bring back a lot of, ooh, you see it in yeah, that one. Yeah, that one just... Yeah, I'm not painting really well, but it's, it's helping for the most part. I think I'm going to have to pull the highlights up a little bit because but it's helping a lot of the thing. I'm not doing a beautiful job here with my painting as you can see it's not on the money all right so that's that's okay the other thing that I might do is there's such beautiful artwork right up here in this dome that I might go in with the brush and let's let me zero everything out and I'm going to increase the contrast and lower the exposure a little bit and just paint over this area I need my brush bigger Paint over that dome. It's too dark. I, I went too far, but that's okay because I can just bring the exposure back a little bit. So what I try to do when I'm doing things like this is I'm just trying to balance out the light. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, the last step, I mean, you would go down here, I think, hold on, and we would definitely increase the texture to bring out detail, the clarity to make things shiny, and I use basically twice the amount of texture that I would clarity. So maybe up to 20. All right, it's looking pretty good. Let's go over to Photoshop and fix the one thing we got to fix. Let's duplicate the layer so we have two layers. Then I'm going to go to free transform. So command T on Mac, control T on Windows. And I'm watch this crooked area right here. I'm going to try to bring this up to straighten it out. Like does that look about straight, Mr. K? Yeah, it's starting to get there, yeah. Yeah, and then maybe I have to bring this end down a little bit to kind of straighten that out a bit more. Mm, I don't know. Uh, that's... Kinda working getting, ag it's kind of working against you now. Oh, yeah, I, I don't want to mess up the floor. I'm, I'm thinking yeah. it should be skewed a little bit. I'm going to skew it down just a hair yeah. and then pull this up a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Now, what I wish I could do, and I can't, is I need this thing to be over here. Like, the, it's not centered in the frame. So let's look at where the center is. Go to free transform, it'll show you where the center is. The center is right there, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where I would ideally like to have the image, right? I would like to have it like that. Now, is it okay if I cheat? Are we gonna go there? I think we're gonna, gonna go, go there, there. I go think there. we're going. Let's All go. right, here's what we're gonna do. I think we're going to grab this side here. Yep, yep. We're going to put it up on its own layer. So all we have is this. And then we're going to take it and move it over here. And we're going to flip it horizontal. And then we're going to line everything up. What? No, no, yes. Oh, we're doing it. We're Oh, we're doing it. And then I think... Let's flatten it down, and we drop in at the last minute. Hold on, let's get rid of this background layer. I'm gonna flatten the image so you can see that white area on the edge. We're gonna grab the, mag the tragic wand tool. We're gonna select that area, and then we're gonna expand it by four pixels. Why do we do this? Why do we expand it by four pixels? Why is it always four? It just works better. <laughs> and then we're gonna go to content aware fill. We're gonna cross our fingers. I think it's gonna be okay. Boom shakalaka boom. All right. Yeah. <laughs> That's cheating. It's All a little right. bit of cheating. So now we got to go back to the original. Uh, I still still got a little wonkiness there at the top. Oh, but, yeah, you got yeah. You would have to go yeah, in and massage it. But that's pretty, that, for that Yeah, right up time, there. That amount of time. So let, can we go back to the yeah. original? All right, let's go find the original. All right, give me a second here. Let's go here and we'll grab it. 
And the original, we have to get it to the default, is here. So you see how crooked that yep. is now? It's very obviously crooked, and there's the straightened version. Yeah. Now, that the straightened version is not just straightened. It's got an extra wall. But uh, now, what I might do is... I might keep this stained glass. Since it's a different stained glass window than the other one. Mm -hmm. I might keep that, put it on its own separate layer, and then once I've straightened everything out, go yeah. and paint the right yeah, one in put there. Put that one back in. Yeah. Right, All right. So you don't see that in there. Okay, but it's a good photo, and it's too good not to fix. So let's let's take the time to do it. Oh, one last thing. Finishing move. Boom. Go to camera raw filter. Head down to the effects. You're going to add just enough vignette to take the edge off the edges. You don't want it. You don't want people to open it up and see the vignette. Yeah. You just want to take. Look at the. Well, look at what that one little thing did. Oh, Watch. I know. It's huge. Look, it's just that one little thing, but it makes a big difference. I do that in all my cathedral. But anyway, it's a good image. Let's let's get the most out of it. All right. Hey, coming up next, we got more. We got more images. More, more, mm -hmm. more, 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 more. Hey, who did that song? I know who did it. I'll tell Eric on the break. Let's see if you know who did that song. More, more, more. Disco song from the 1970s. We'll be right back. Eric's not going to know. I don't know. I'll tell you. It's the Andrea True Connection. Oops, I just gave away the oh. answer. Multitask with Platypod. The ultra commercial twin pack. Distance learning during a pandemic is a challenging situation. With the Platypod Twin Pack, you can teach your students just like before by letting them see the big picture. Nothing puts the board in boardroom like the same old view. The Platypod Twin Pack easily fits in small spaces, so you can unlock a variety of unique angles that share the whole story. When you can't waste time on multiple setups, let the Platypod Twin Pack be your sous chef. It captures multiple angles simultaneously, so you can focus on what you do best. Sometimes just getting around your grip can be the last of the leverage production. The Platypod Twin Pack clears the floor of tripods and light stands, so you can use the entire room! <laughs> now more than ever, we're learning to adapt. We've moved the office into the bedroom, and we moved the gym. Whoa! The Platypod Twin Pack is just as adaptable. You can mount or strap it to just about anything. Turn any location into a professional setup. Yeah! Ooh. Platypod Twin Pack. No matter who you are, or what you do, or where you do it, double your creative impact with the Platypod Twin Pack. Go to platypod.com to get your twin pack today. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Germany. I'm a French photographer living in Los Angeles, California, and I'm a fine art artist. I love Sneak Peek because you can host all your photos online. You can share the best one through albums with incredible privacy settings. For example, you can just share an album to like three people or for just a number of hours. They have amazing watermarking on the fly where you can just change your mind and watermark and redo the watermark or take it out and it's instant on all your photos. Having an official portfolio is so vital today. Now they have an amazing launching deal where for just taking the basic subscription we're offering now, which is roughly $15 a month, you're going to get a professional designer to do your website for you. All you have to do is fill in a form with a few data and you're good to go, a designer will design your website for you. So if you don't like web design, this is a great opportunity. I think we're better off taking photos and learning how to do HTML and CSS and getting the most perfect website ever. I mean, even if you were to go the route of WordPress, which I did for many years, having a WordPress is free, but you need to host the WordPress. And a good hosting service is between 10 to $20 a month. So all you have to do is click the link below and get the offer. You will get this special price, which is 50% off for the first year, but you're gonna get it for life. So get it now. I love my Sleepy website. I love the business that it drives me, and I want the same success for you. Get it now. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. Hey, we're back, Scott and Eric. Uh, we're live. Mr. K? Hey. Hey. 
Yes, hey. we got some more images. We're gonna go a little Let's, faster this time. All right, though. we are gonna go faster. We're gonna uh, we're starting yeah, I'm off. Gonna, with I'm gonna get in, a timer in Mr. K's uh, wheelhouse here. A little a portrait with the Milky Way in the background. Um, so we have a couple of issues here. Oh uh, yes. One issue is the color of the sky is blue. Uh, well, yeah, that's the the white balance is totally. Yeah, the off. white balance is way way off. And when I fix the sky, it's gonna mess up your guy. <laughs> there yeah. you go. Yeah. But I'm gonna do it. Here's what we're gonna do. Let's go and let's get the temperature way over to blue. So it looks more like a traditional. Let's go way over to green. Oh, no, I'm sorry, over to magenta. Oh, but I don't wanna go that far blue if I'm gonna add magenta. All right, and then let's increase our vibrance maybe a little bit. Let's bring out the highlights. And what would you do to this to bring out this guy, Mr. Uh, uh, Clarity? So, uh, texture. D. Hayes. Use oh, the D. D. Hayes. Hayes. Yes, I'm sorry. Right? Let me take out those first. But let's, don't, let's... don't put in texture. No, no, texture no. Texture on sorry. the Milky Way, because then what yeah. happens is all the no, no. stars around the Milky Way no, no. start getting it's, weird. It's D. Hayes. You, D. Hayes, and yeah. then add a little clarity. Add a little clarity. Boom. Okay. There you go. All right. Now, he doesn't look great, but that's okay. We're going to fix it. Let's go open. There he is. All right. Let's go reopen that same photo again. Now, let's go set back to our defaults. Now, he's overlit, like way, way overlit. It's just too bright. Let's try pulling back the highlights and see if that helps. Ooh, it does help quite a bit. Oh, yeah. All right, so now he's looking better. Uh, and let's go, and here's what I'm going to do. Let's go to open it. Grab a selection tool like the magic wand, but don't use it. Go up here to this button at the very top called Select Subject. Click on that to select him. Then press Command uh -huh, J yeah. on Mac or Control J on Windows. So now you have him floating on his own layer up here. Copy, just Command C. Don't just hit paste or he'll just float in. Go to under the edit menu, under paste special and choose paste in place and watch, boom, it puts him right exactly yep. where he was before. Now what you have to do is you have to kind of get the color here a little bit on him. Right? Yep. So let's go to the, you can't make him that warm. You got to get a little bit of blue in here. I'd get maybe the brush, a little bit of blue, and just a little bit, just a little bit on him. Just so he doesn't look so, maybe a tad more. And there we go. Because that, let's see mm -hmm. how that helped. Yeah, it just cooled him down a little bit. Yeah. You don't want him to look so warm against that cool scene and eric i don't this would be your call would i want to bring out detail in those trees or just let him go i mean the silhouette? thing is there's no detail in the there's trees. no detail i'm right so i mean if you bring it out you know what's going to happen noise it's going to be noise 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 so now, unless you unless you light the the trees with another source now, of light so this was obviously a long exposure yeah i think it was 10 seconds I at saw. some point our subject moved and that's why you see even in the original there's a little black halo around him yep. I think what I would do is I would go in here with the uh, rubber stamp tool and I would just paint on the layer below him to get rid of that stuff <laughs> yeah, yeah, I said yeah. the layer below him and they painted right over his face sorry wrong place just kind of get rid of any of that excess stuff around the edges just option click or on on Windows and just kind of get rid of that excess any spillover and you you could do the same thing on his layer. You just have to be a little more careful. But there you go. That's it for that one. Ready to roll yep, on? Yep, yep. All right. That'll get us in the ballpark there. Okay. Oh, yeah. Next, let's go to this one. All righty. Uh, I'm going to just hit auto and see where we're at. Oop, done. No, not done. <laughs> but that's better. That's better. Better. But I would say that these houses and this other crooked, you know, crooked horizon line and all that, that's probably not the focus of this. What it's were you helping? What's your subject? The, the bird. bird. <laughs> all right. And you might even go tighter on it. I think that right there, just that alone, but then you can decide how is it, if it's really, really about the bird and not the, about the bird in its surroundings so much, you might even go tighter. Just leave plenty of room in front of the bird, right? So it has like visually room to move. Uh, then we'll hit texture, clarity, add a little contrast to Renio, and uh, sharpen it to death. And I think, your, your goal there. So let's 
Look at your before and after. There's your just yeah. a little easy tweaks. I mean, you're hitting the auto button. It's doing half the work for you, and you're just going to drop in and tweak a few things. But that's that photo was good to begin with. Um, let's look at what do we got here? This is an interesting photo. So I think the outfits and the posing and the symmetry and all that is so good. And the lighting is so mm -hmm. bad. Yeah. That's going to really make it tough. This is such a cute shot. Now, of course, I would crop in tight on the kids. I would get in. And I like the hard shadows and all, but man... Yeah, the words and then like the half of the horse mural on the wall. Yeah, half help. of the horse mural's not yeah, helping you. It's not helping. But right in here is a great photo. But we have where the light is really working against us. All this harsh light over here. You can try by pulling back the highlights. That will help. See how it took the heat off of them? Look, watch, I'm dropping it to a hundred. Yeah. But it takes the heat off the kid's face. And it's, it, you're starting to bring back his shirt was blown out over here. Now it's just a matter of getting the adjustment brush, going in with a little bit of exposure, just, just a Same bit of exposure. Same thing you did before. Yep. And let's brighten her face and the front of her outfit. This is, I love the styling though, right? The styling is really yeah. good. Let's get the other side of her face. Let's brighten the other side of his face. We don't want to brighten the sides that are already very bright. And you might just go in here, here uh, hit the plus sign, and then this time instead of doing exposure, do shadows, and just kind of bring out the detail. Because this is about, I think, the clothes, right? Maybe for a kid's clothing store or something. And then her jacket, we've lost a lot of detail in there. And back it off a little. My crop was not stupendous, but I think you see there's a shot there. And... You might even, ready, go down to go to effects. Vignetting. <laughs> Lighten that edge just, just a tiny bit out towards the edges. There you go. And I think you're in good shape there. All right. So that's an easy one, I think. Yeah. But that's a cool shot. All right. Let's go this one. Let's try this one. Okay. This one's just got one big thing. Because I great camera technique and stuff. Yep. Uh, let's hit auto and see what it does. Uh, I disagree with auto's choice. I think it needs to be brighter. Let's add. Of course, it's got it's got a lot of metal. That means we can add a ton of texture. Yeah. We can add a ton of it's clarity. It's a cool shot. It's, it's a, really, a very cool there's shot. There's one thing that's just like totally like bugging me. I know. I'm going to get to it. I know what it is. And I knew, I knew that you would know the second. Now, I'm going to crank up the contrast, but then i got to lower the vibrant so it doesn't yeah. look overdone. So I want yeah. it to be contrasty, but I don't want all that other stuff. That's a cool This shot. pole and those lines oh, got to go. Killing me. Killing me. Come on. It, it's, it's such too, a good It's the position of it. It's like it's distracting right to the car. Like, yeah. It's, it's like, and it's, it's almost like just... All right, it's we got to go. It's got to go. It's got to go. Uh, let me, I'm sorry, I grabbed the wrong thing. Here, let's just grab this whole thing using the patch tool, slide it over and get rid of it. Slide the other way. There we go. Something along that lines to get rid of that. And then use the spot healing brush to get rid of the cables that were running between that. I know it says like a safety fence or something there, but you got to get rid of it. You uh, hold the shift key, it'll draw straight lines for you. You can get rid of it in two seconds. Just click once, hold shift, click again. And Bob is your uncle. And let's go here to there. I would get rid of that white line there, even though it's really there. And then uh, the last thing I would do, now this is, I always do this because I like, I want to go to screen. So I changed my blend mode to screen. I'm going to hide it behind a layer mask. So I'm holding the option key on Mac, the alt can windows. And I love to see detail in the wheels. Oh, that's cool, yeah. And then I'm going to lower the opacity to where it matches the rest of the car. But that makes a big difference in bringing out detail and interest. Then sharpen it to death because it's the kind of, kind of shot that can get sharpened. And that's a nice shot right that's there. That's a nice shot. That's a nice... I'm trying I to love, get... I mean, they did everything, too. The, they got the pan going, plus they left the, the lead in the, yeah, somewhere no, for the car to go. Yes. A lot of people have that problem where they get no, the car on the edge. No, it's a perfect composition. Yeah. Perfecto. Perfecto. 
All right, let's see what we got here. All right, kind of cute. At the same time, a little creepy. Cute, In creepy. the forest, yeah, yeah. black outfit. And, and again, compositionally, it's just... All right, kind of a so weird spot. It, yeah, so let's do this. Let's flip the crop sideways. Press the letter X, and let's flip the crop sideways. Because there's a nice photo in here, and the photo is about the little girl. It's not about the forest, so let's get in on her. The second thing is her skin tone is blue. So let's go yeah, and add I a mean, nice... I mean, if you're going for, like, Halloween, like... Yeah, uh, let's go know. and warm up her skin tone so that looks nice. And just hit auto and see what it does. Ich, oh, undo. Too far. All right. Too so far. let's bring up the exposure a little bit. Hey, is this a raw photo? Oh, it's a raw photo. Let's go to Adobe Portrait. Let's go. Uh, let's hold the shift key and go shift and double click on the word on the nub for whites. Shift, double click on the blacks. I think the whites are maybe a little bright. It's not clipping. Yeah. But I'm just like stylistically, it seems a little bright. Yeah, so much. And I'm going to pull the highlights back. In fact, what I might do instead. How about this, Eric? What if we were to take the gradient tool, mm -hmm. darken the exposure a little bit, and just darken that area above her head? Mm -hmm. Maybe right yeah. down to where it's hitting the top yeah, of that. Not touching the top. And then maybe a little on the highlights up there. So you don't really see. In fact, you might go a little lower. It's not really messing with her head because it's completely transparent right there. And then it starts getting darker. But I think that actually did pretty well. Now, you can do the edge vignette, or you can go and get the radial tool, the radial filter. Let's darken the exposure a lot. And whoops, I'm going to hit the uh, invert, yeah. invert button. And then I think we put the light just on her. Mm -hmm. Now you can have it coming in from an angle or from right above. And then, now, you can go ahead and give it a dreamy look if you want. You could go and go to negative, negative texture, and negative clarity. I'm sorry, negative clarity to give it a little bit of a dreamy look. I mm -hmm. went too far with the negative texture. Just to give it a little bit of that soft focus kind yeah, of look. Yeah, it's going to soften everything up too. And then I still might go in just on the very edges because you know you can. And I think that's certainly better. Uh, it might is, be the whole image might be a little dark now. Is that stick on the bottom this ground? Right here? Yeah. Yeah, you can get, I would get rid of that I'd too. I'd get rid of that I too. also might get rid of some of these individual little white spots of bokeh or bokeh, yep. whatever you want to yep. call it. And maybe even trim it a little this way. Mm -hmm. Now, her coat, we don't have much detail in. I'm going to see if we can bring out some detail in her coat. Well, no more than right there. I think but you'd be better served, instead of just applying that, is go to the adjustment brush and, and just paint over in. her coat and just bring out that. Because you should see details. shouldn't be just solid black. And lastly, if you wanted to, you could add highlights to her hair. Just, um, you could, well, she already has highlights. Let's just accentuate them. It's going to look bad when I paint it in, but we're going to accentuate the highlights. There's one over there. There's some down here. And then that's way too much, of course. It's supposed to be really subtle. But even that little bit of, of that makes a difference. And we'll, we'll see where, so there's where we started bef after the crop. And then I don't like seeing those uh, buttons. There we go. So it would just kind of get you in the ballpark. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure. I, I'm loving the little circle of light. I'd have to maybe mess with that a little bit. I'm not this sure. This might be a little too intense. Yeah, it might be too intense. It also might be too large. Yeah. So I'd have to zoom out and then I think containing it more within her, I think, would be, would be better. Yeah. And maybe even smaller yet. And turn it a little bit. I would have to mess with it, but you, you see kind of where we're yeah, going. The point. Maybe that gives you some ideas of, of what to do. 
All right, there we go. Let's let's see if we can get through a couple more here real quick. How about this one? I'll I'll let Eric take. The well, the first thing we're gonna have to fix, right, is the horizon. Yeah, let's get that horizon let's get line. Get the horizon so we can at least even start. Yep. So let's go here and uh, get that horizon line somewhat straight. Oh, All right. Step yes. two. Feeling better. Uh, it's it's already a JPEG, so we can't apply anything there. It's just uh, hitting auto. Auto didn't do much for this. No. So let's. Uh, here's what I would do. My my gut feeling is to lower the opacity to get the sky looking really good. I mean, I'm sorry, lower the exposure mm -hmm. to get the sky looking really good, increase the contrast, and then go to shadows to bring up some detail in the house. Now, I might have gone a little too far. Clarity will make the water shiny. Texture will kind of help it. You could, uh, I would darken the sky too. Let's add a gradient and darken that sky a bit. Not, I don't want to make it look like a storm. No. Yeah. Storms. That come. Sometimes you want to start off drastic and then pull it back. Yeah. So we're getting there. I think it's going to need an overall brightening or something. It's a little. Yeah. Maybe a little too. I. I. I it's a little too moody and dark. A little too now. moody. That's better. Now I would get in there with a brush, increase the highlights, and let's bring some detail back in that house. Let's maybe do the whole pier. To bring back a little now that's sloppy, right? Yeah, I know that it's sloppy. So you yeah, don't have to write in, in your trackpad. Scott's sloppy with his I can't even get the minus brush to work on here. It's I'm hitting minus to 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 get rid of that, but it's not doing it. So I'm just gonna undo. Just try to do a better job. <laughs> but brighten the house, brighten the pier. But what you do want is that dark, nice sky. That's what you shot the shot for, right? So we're we're getting there. I don't know. Let's we'll see. Yeah, it's getting there. Yeah, definitely. Eh, just give you an, kind of an idea. All right, yeah. we're going to take a short break. We have some giveaways coming up. What are our giveaways? We're giving away platypot. <laughs> platypot goosenecks. Two of them. They're loosey. They're goosey. They attach to your platypot and let you st oh, do yeah. stuff. How about Victoria's? Victoria's got Victoria Pavlov's wonderful brand new book on Adobe Fresco. Who's got a book on Adobe Fresco? Nobody. Victoria, Victoria does. does. She's a wonderful digital artist and just a wonderful person. And uh, this is her brand new book. We got a copy to send you of her book. Yeah. We also have got a copy of my new book, the digital photography book. So that's just out in hardcover. We have it in actual print. And we're going to give away a copy of a slick pick portfolio so slick pick portfolio is the um, it's a website that lets the photographers design their photography uh, design their portfolio but this the portfolio level account they assign a graphic designer to help you build it so it is you don't have to do any coding i actually built mine without they offered a designer and i built yeah. mine it's really very easy it's very but if slick. you want their help yeah it's slick did you build yours yet no i haven't Oh, you lame-o. I know, Eric, me go too. building it up tonight. I know, I could. You got rockets, you got Milky Ways, you got landscapes. What are you, I know. What are you, I know. What are you waiting well, for? Well, you know, and the, the beauty is, uh, Calby One uh, members uh, watching the show, you, you can get a discount on that. If you go to slickpick.com forward slash Calby One, everybody gets 50% uh, off. That's do you watching. have to be a member to get that? Anybody, any no, grid watcher. Any grid watcher. If you're could. watching the grid, you don't have to be a Calby One member. Yep. Yeah, should be. You should be. You but, ought to be. But slickpick.com forward slash Kelby1, you can get 50% off. Yeah, hey, I'm so, recording a really cool class tomorrow. I that's can't, cool. I can't tell you what it is, but I'm recording a really cool class tomorrow. I'll be in that studio right over there. And you're going to go, oh, man, I want to see that class. If you're a Kelby1 member, you will. You will. Anyway, let's do one more. We're going to blast. Let's do oh, one we more. we to take a break. Oh, no, we're take a break. We're going to take oh, a break. Eric, then tell them how they back. enter the contest. To enter the contest, you just go into the uh, comments, leave us a comment on what you'd like to win. Um, and I think today the, uh, the winners will be people that answer the trivia question of who sang the song more, more, more. I'm just kidding. Just leave a comment and you'll win. So. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see you back and here in just a few minutes. And if you want to know how I really feel. -na 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 -na. Maybe. We'll see.
Would you believe us if we told you that you could fit studio lighting in your pocket? Well, Lytra has made it possible. Lytra is a global award-winning brand that designs and manufactures professional-grade camera lights that are compact, rugged, and waterproof. Whether you're using Lytra gear in a photo studio or underwater, Lytra's mission is to provide content creators with flexible and unlimited lighting tools that can mount on any camera, anywhere. Their lights come with a high CRI or color rendering index, making them some of the most color accurate lights in the industry. Due to the lights compact and rugged design, photographers are able to use the lights in ways that their studio lighting never could. Lytra has also made multiple lighting accessories available to fit your every need as a creator. Whether you're shooting portraits, nailing a product shot, or even flying your drone, they have got you covered. Lytra enables photographers and filmmakers to focus on their craft and create something beautiful. What will you create? This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the world's most compact tripod base. Make sure you don't miss any episodes of The Grid by subscribing to Apple's podcast app or iTunes. It's free and we even have a special audio only version too. So sign up today. Hey, we're back. Uh, we're live here on The Grid. Scott Kelby with Eric Kuna. Yeah, Eric we got Kuna, um, a couple Kuna. more couple more images, right? We're going to do a Yeah, we do two more images. Here we go. Let's start with this one real quick and then we'll get our winners. So this one is a typical backlit shot, right? Mm -hmm. Cool looking dog. And there's a dog in there somewhere. There is a dog. Well, start by hitting auto. Oh, dog's and out a little bit. There's the dog. Yeah. I think you still need to bump up the shadows a bit. And then let's, let's get rid. So the biggest problem here now that we can see the dog, the biggest problem is you have these bright, bright, bright areas behind. So we know there's a tree there. Let's go ahead Especially and just let's side, minimize yeah. those areas with cropping. It is a portrait of the dog. It's not a portrait of the forest. So let's minimize those. That's step one, and that'll give us a tighter, better shot of the dog, which is what we really want to see. Yeah. Now, you got to fix these. There's a couple different ways you could do this. Let's get the graduated filter, right? Let's drop the highlights and even try the exposure a bit, and let's just drag this way to just take some of the heat off there. Now, now that I see it in place, let's see if we can take more highlights. Maybe a little more exposure. Uh, it's going to be hard with the exposure because they hit a limit. Yeah. Well, that doesn't look bad there. No. Oh, Let's hit uh, and add good. another one. So, gosh, I'm so used to Lightroom. I don't know. <coughs> what do I got to do to add a second one here? There's no plus sign. There's no plus button. Oh, it reset. Okay, good. <coughs> yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a big camera raw fan. <coughs> It is better than it used to be by far. All right, that's good, Eric. Look. Yeah, that's much better. Now, now let's get the radial filter, right? Let's go brighter and let's pop that on the doggo. Now it's uh, invert. And pop that on the dog, a Rooney. And then maybe just finish up with the brush. Darken these areas over here that are like popping your eye and darken these areas that are not doggo. I mean, that's, that's kind of just the, the one yeah, minute I mean, fix. It's a hard one to do because I mean, you've got dark. Why? Yeah. It's the, the dark tree, <laughs> the dogs yeah, in but the it's darkness. Better. I mean, it, it's a lot better, a lot better. If you look at it there, but that's where, that's where, again, if you could put some the dog in the shade or right, not, yeah, yeah, you know, a like better that. spot. Let's but go that's here. That's what you can do with it. Yeah. All right. So great subject. I really like mm -hmm. her her look. I like the color, and I know what you're trying to do here with the messy things in front. Can I tell you something? Very rarely do I see this work. Like I know that you've seen it, and you've seen it work. Mm -hmm. You've seen it on YouTube videos where they stick something in front of the lens. Very rarely does it work, and unfortunately, I think this just one little stick coming down in front of her face is not helping her look better or more interesting. Uh, she's got a great look on her own. Adding this here, I, I, I would get rid of that. You can get rid of this in Photoshop. It's not a two-minute job. It's a 15-minute job, but you could get rid of it really well. Um, 
and and I'm going to take two seconds and just get you going. But the other thing that I would fix in this photo is, and this is very common, what I'm about to tell you. Do you notice that one eye is higher than the other? That is one of the most common things. But we love facial symmetry. Like people like people with, with symmetrical faces. This is a 10 second fix. Here's what you do. Get the lasso tool, select her whole eye area, the whole area all the way around, nice and loose. Well, I said nice and loose and then at the last second I blew it. Here we go. Nice and loose. Add a 10 pixel feather. Just go to modify feather and type in 10. Then put that on its own layer by pressing command J on Mac, control J on Windows. So what you have is her eye and then a soft edge around it. All you're going to do is get the move tool, use the up arrow key on your keyboard and look, boom, her eyes are symmetrical. That's it. Just use the up arrow key and you're just literally moving it up and then watch. You'll see how, how much it was off by. It was off by quite a bit there. All right. Now you got to get rid of this, this thing. Here's how you could probably do it. You could do it in chunks. First, let's see if this, oh, that's not going to work. All right. Oh, it didn't yeah. work as badly as I thought. Maybe I should take my time and try to do it a little bit better. All right, that got rid of some of it. Then you can try this up here. Maybe go the other way. Then we'll try to get rid of this up here. I mean, you're just dra you're using the patch tool here to get rid of it. That's the patch tool. You put a lasso around the thing you want to remove. And then yeah, you drag it to hard. a clean area. Now, the other thing that I think that you'll wind up doing probably is this. Selecting her other eye, putting it on its own layer, flipping it horizontal. Don't forget to flip it horizontal and fix that part of the eye that it's going over. So what you would do is lower the opacity so the eyes line up. Like if you, if you lower the opacity, you can get the eyes to line up perfectly right there. Then what you do, hold the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on Windows, and then we're just going to paint over that part of the eye right there. See how it, woo! Now, you got to brighten that, right? It's a little too dark. Go to Levels or whatever you like to do, and let's brighten that up so it doesn't look so obvious. Like that. What? I know. And let's bring this down just a little bit. Something like that. And then that last part will be easy to fix. Okay, but that's kind of, I think you got a great shot there, and I think you got to work on it just a little bit, and there you go. All right, guys, thanks to everybody that sent in images. That was yeah, really cool that you guys really were cool. willing to do that, and I hope some of it you found little bits of that helpful. Um, and uh, we have some winners. Eric, who we yeah, got? Yeah, we have winners. Uh, so Deb has won the Slick Pick. So uh, she says her uh, website needs a makeover. So oh, great. You'll love Deb's it. She's got a Slick Pick uh, portfolio account. And then Juta uh, has won the Goosenecks. And Joseph B. has won your digital photography book. So, and then Barry Morris has won the Fresco book. So uh, if you email us, right? at gridprize at kelby1.com so gridprize at kelby1.com will get you your prizes uh confirm your information and then send it over to you so um and then like we talked about earlier um everybody's a winner on the grid because if you go to slickpick.com forward slash kelby1 you can get 50 percent off a slick pick Dude, 50 uh, percent off is a lot that's a lot yeah that's so a lot there you go slick it's not 15 percent it's five zero five zero percent so, All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Mr. Kuna. Yeah, Love the shorts. Let's do more of yes, that. Yes, yes. And uh, thank you, guys. Uh, we will see you uh, next Wednesday. Right here. Right here. On the grid. Take care, everybody. See ya. Light is photography. That's why, besides the camera itself, perhaps the most powerful tool a photographer has is a flash. When you hold it in your hand, you're holding the ability to create light on demand. When you understand light, you can create drama, mood and emotion. For many photographers, learning flash has been an uphill battle and some have simply given up. But that's all about to change. What if you could spend two full days with two of our industry's most passionate, gifted teachers who would finally demystify Flash for the beginner and push and challenge more experienced Flash users.
Can you imagine just how far you would go in those two days? This fall, you'll have that opportunity as two of the top Flash authors and educators come together to create a truly unique learning experience. Joe McNally, the man who opened the photographic world to the real power of Flash and inspired an entire generation of Flash users through his books, The Moment It Clicks and The Hot Shoe Diaries, along with Scott Kelby, author of The Flash Book the number one best-selling book on Flash for the past three years, have come together to coach you, to mentor you, to teach, inform and illuminate by sharing their latest Flash techniques, their hard-earned secrets and even the post-processing and retouching work that goes into making stunning, remarkable images as you uncover a whole new world of light powered by just a simple Flash. It's two full days, all presented live, all online. This is the Flash Photography Conference. The power of light is in your hands.